Good evening. I'm Meg Fisher, and I'm delighted to be here um, to, to talk to you about our way forward, why a COVID-19 booster shot matters. I apologize for us not being able to live stream this session, but we're going to answer all of the questions that we received ahead of time, and try to give you as much information as we possibly can. So I'm delighted because tonight I'm here with Naomi Salazar, Nicole Field, and Herb Conaway. So let's start with some introductions. I'm Meg Fisher. I'm a pediatric infectious disease uh, physician, and I serve as a special advisor to the Commissioner of Health. Nayeli Salazar. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Nayeli Salazar de Noguera. I'm the Program Management Officer for the COVID Community Corps, which is the on the field, um, boots on the ground program that brings you information to your local uh, communities. And Nicole Fields. Good evening. I'm Nicole Field. I'm the CEO of St. James Health, federally qualified health center located in Newark, New Jersey. Um, we have been doing COVID testing and vaccinations for the past two and a half years and uh, have been serving the community of Newark. Outstanding. And Assemblyman Conway. Hi, I'm Dr. Herb Conway, State Assemblyman and uh, Chair of the Assembly Health Committee and, uh, uh, and the General Assembly. And I also am the Director of the Berlin County uh, Department of Health. Fantastic. We have a great group here. So we're talking about boosters tonight. And what I thought I wanted to start with is just to tell you which vaccines we have available and what the schedule is. So as you know, there are three vaccines. We have the Pfizer vaccine, the Moderna vaccine, and the J&J &J or Johnson vaccine. For children ages five to 17, the only vaccine that's authorized for use is the Pfizer vaccine. And it's available as a two dose series for the five to 11 year olds that's given uh, once, and then the second dose is three weeks later. And those children are not yet eligible for a booster. Remember, they just started to be immunized last November. For the older children, the adolescents, 12 to 17, it's also just Pfizer, two doses, time zero, and then three to eight weeks later. And they are eligible for a booster if it's been, um, if it's been five months since their second dose. For adults, there are three choices, the Pfizer, the Moderna, or the J&J. &J. For Pfizer and Moderna, it's two doses, and that's three to four to eight weeks uh, apart, and then a booster in five months. For the J&J, &J, it's a single dose for the primary series, and then a booster after two months. Now, just last week, we had uh, the uh, Food and Drug Administration and the Centers for Disease Control and uh, Prevention, they authorized the use of a second booster dose for certain population. And those second booster doses are for three groups. The first are anyone is eligible who's 50 years of age and older. The next group are people who are 12 years of age and older who have problems with their immune system, so they need the extra dose to help them reach um, that, that uh, protection level. And then the third group are people who receive two doses of J&J. &J. They are now allowed to have a, uh, an additional booster, and these booster doses, these second boosters, are given at four months after the first booster. So let's go to our questions now. And I wanna start with Naomi Salazar, and she's, I wanna want you to tell us, what are you hearing from people in the communities about why they're delaying and not getting the booster, or maybe they haven't gotten vaccines yet at all? Absolutely, Dr. Fisher. So there are um, a couple of top questions that we're hearing currently. One is people believe that they're fully vaccinated uh, and not knowing that they're eligible for a booster shot, the first or the second booster shot, um, because they believe they've already gotten uh, the first and second primary series dose. Uh, so that's not question number one. Um, number two, we have uh, a lot of misinformation related to being fully or naturally immunized after getting COVID. People believe that if they got COVID, then they have superior um, immunity. And that's just not the case, right? We know that, um, you know, getting boosted a couple months after you've 
uh, recover from COVID-19 allows you to have extra protection. And then lastly, uh, we are hearing that people believe that the COVID-19 pandemic is over uh, simply because the mask mandate has been lifted. So I would say those are our top three questions and uh, misinformation that we're hearing on the ground. Thank you so much. Uh, the coal fields, what, you, what kinds of misinformation are you hearing up in Newark at your, at your location? We're hearing a lot of the similar um, things coming out of our vaccination events. We still hear a lot of people talking about the vaccine was developed too quickly and that they don't necessarily trust it due to how quickly it came out. And then a lot of the misinformation um, having to do with fertility and uh, um, that there's going to be a tracker in the vaccine, things like that. So we've continued to stick with our education and make sure we're putting the proper information out there. And we answer all questions. We don't think any question's dumb. They can come to any vaccine site and ask any of our providers or staff, and they'll take the time to have the conversation and explain it to them. Boy, that's really important. It's very um, important to when people say they're, they're not sure about the vaccine to find out exactly what it is they're not sure about so that you can address that question just as you're doing. Uh, Dr. Conaway, as a doctor and the director of the Burlington Health County Health Department, what are some of the challenges you're seeing down there in Burlington? Well, we um, are fortunate that we've had, uh, we've kept at the vaccination program through the uh, entire uh, pandemic. Uh, but, and the challenges are really related to the things we've just heard. Uh, people uh, do, uh, Get a lot of information from the internet. A lot of that information uh, on the internet is misinformation and really driven by, I think, self-interested people who are, I guess, trying to make a buck or just, you know, they're people who just like to wreck things, <laughs> quite frankly, and who don't mind, uh, you know, uh, telling untruths. And that is a, is a huge problem when you have so many people using social media as a, um, uh, I'll use the word trusted in quotes, uh, a purveyor of information. Unfortunately, there's a lot of misinformation there that, that needs to be um, um, fought against. Uh, the other thing we, we hear uh, is the concern that's been raised about uh, the vaccine having come um, sort of rushed into use. And, and what I tell people is that these uh, vaccinations um, you know, really result from decades of research on the one hand, and really involve studies across populations involving different races, different ages, well studied, and indeed more studied than many of the medications people typically take today uh, for blood pressure and other ailments by their doctor. So, uh, and, and so the, these vaccines have in fact been well studied and rest on a mountain of research uh, as many of our discoveries, many of our scientific advances do. You don't know, wake up one day and all of a sudden figure out fusion. I mean, it, it's decades upon decades of, of work uh, to get these things into place. So, you know, education has been mentioned is the way forward. Uh, and I think um, interventions uh, uh, by trusted people in the community, uh, particularly the, the medical community, the physicians talking about these things, will encourage those people that are hesitant, but they have to ask, they have to go to their doctor's office, go to other places where um, trusted people uh, can inform them um, uh, of the truth of vaccination and how important it is. Absolutely, and we know that uh, nurses and doctors and healthcare workers are some of those trusted people. So, um, and the other thing we know is that just as you said, this vaccine was put through all three phases of study before it was released um, and authorized for use. And just as you said, this continues to be studied. Yes. So there is V-Safe and there are a variety of other safety monitoring systems that are continuing really daily to ensure that we have a vaccine that's, that's not um, a problem and that is uh, keeping people safe. Um, Naomi, how are you, um, how are you encouraging parents to get their children vaccinated and to get their, their adolescents boosted. Do you find it different um, in talking to people about getting their children vaccinated? Absolutely, Dr. Fisher. So here at the CCC, we run two types of outreach. We run digital and also virtual outreach, uh, virtual, excuse me, and physical outreach. Uh, and so what that means is that we're talking to different demographics. Um, typically, we're you know, uh, catering to younger individuals who are in the social media realm, 
um, by you know, uh, providing infographics, uh, things that are quick uh, you know, to, to consumption. And then uh, on the ground, we have the opportunity to actually have one-on-one -on -one conversations and understand where the hesitancy or miscommunication is coming from. So that's really when we are meeting uh, parents or elder individuals, um, sometimes individuals who are new Americans. Um, so we're able to communicate with them, uh, not only in uh, you know, uh, uh, intimate way, but also uh, in the language of their native language, uh, which is key for our program to make sure that we represent the communities that we're trying to reach, not only culturally, but also linguistically. Fantastic. Uh, and uh, Nicole Fields, in, in, uh, at St. James Health, um, we know you serve a large population of uninsured and underinsured. Uh, have you found that people are willing to get the booster or is this a group that's harder to reach? So we actually find that our largest uninsured population is in the Ironbound section of Newark where our main health center is located. It's also our best vaccinated community in Newark. Um, we saw a lot less hesitancy in that population and we believe a lot of it has to do with the understanding that vaccines help to keep you out of the emergency room and our uninsured um, members of the community don't wanna end up in the emergency room. The uninsured members of our community also heavily rely on their federally qualified health centers. So they're constantly coming in, they're talking to our providers and they're listening and asking their questions. So we really have not seen that much hesitancy in that population. And I'm pretty confident that they're also gonna be the ones to come out for the boosters. Fantastic. And I think well, we've seen at the Department of Health that if you make the vaccine accessible to, um, to the populations, you have a lot better chance that they're going to uh, get both the primary and the booster and now probably that, that second booster as well. Well, we know that every vaccine has side effects and, and there's been a lot of talk about the uh, side effect with uh, myocarditis inflammation of the heart. Dr. Conway, does the uh, vaccine cause that? And how do you uh, explain that to people? Well, the vaccine uh, can cause, the mRNA vaccines in particular can cause uh, myocarditis, but we see that in a very small percentage, very small, almost vanishingly small percentage of people. Um, and you know, we have to approach it with an understanding that it is very hard, I guess for a lot of reasons, for people to really assess risk, to understand you know, what's really risky and what's not risky. We in healthcare deal with risk and risk assessments all the time and make judgments based on, on risk. Uh, there's a lot that's unknown. You can give the same medicine to 10 different people and, uh, and you might have different reactions and reactions that hadn't even come up yet. We understand this, but uh, it's always better. But, but we move forward because we understand the risk of not doing something are worse than the risk of taking action, either to protect yourself from disease or to get whatever disease process you have treated. And so when you look at these various studies uh, on myocarditis, uh, as an example, uh, one recent study I looked at uh, and, and others before this program tonight, you might find you know, 10 people out of 100,000 persons vaccinated ending up with a, with a myocarditis condition. The overwhelming majority of those conditions will be mild. And, and you have to explain to people that's, that's a point and then three zeros and then a one. So that's, that's one hundredth of a percent risk associated with myocarditis. And the question I'd ask yourself, if somebody gave you a, a dollar and said, you know, you have, um, you know, that small a chance of losing that doll, you'd say, well, I'll take that bet. Or, or, or you know, it is so small a risk, not that we shouldn't um, let people know that there is a risk, but again, it is on the, with everything taken into consideration, the risks, the very important and known risks associated with getting COVID disease, the risk of hospitalization, the risk of death, those risks are, are orders of magnitude greater uh, than the risk of myocarditis or really any of the other things that have shown up of, uh, as a possible side effect to vaccination. And uh, the last thing I say to, to people is there, uh, if you want to consider uh, one grand experiment, we've had 
hundreds of millions of people vaccinated, hundreds of millions of doses given to people. And when you look at the side effects, you could say hardly a side effect from that. And I think that is a success. I don't know how you want to measure success, but it seems to me the vaccination program around COVID is a, is a miracle, a man-made miracle, and, and uh, should be regarded, I think will regard it through, be regarded through the ages as absolutely and positively successful. Fantastic. Thank you for that. Um, and I think it really is important to remember what we're trying to prevent. COVID disease is a bad disease. And in fact, it does commonly involve the heart in young adolescent males. So we're trying to prevent something that's going to do a lot more harm than, uh, than these wonderful vaccines. So thank you for that. Um, um, Daly, you often hear this said, my friend was vaccinated and boosted and he still got, so why should I bother getting vaccinated when I can still get COVID? Sure, absolutely. So we actually have statistics that show the 99% of those people hospitalized uh, due to COVID-19 were people who were unvaccinated. Uh, and when we compare individuals who uh, were fully vaccinated in comparison to individuals who were not vaccinated, we know that uh, those individuals are 11 times more likely to get COVID, right? 10 times more likely to be hospitalized due to COVID and almost five times as likely to die from COVID. So those statistics are really meaningful and impactful when we are talking to individuals. Um, they get a sense of, um, of where do I lie in terms of risk. And we always talk to individuals about, uh, you know, living in multicultural families or multi-generational families, right? Uh, families that, um, you know, whatever you do, you're going to bring back to the household and, you know, could harm somebody in your, in, your, uh, in your house. So, you know, we bring those points up. We ask, you know, consider um, keeping yourself safe, but also your household, your neighborhood, your community, and then your state. Excellent. And, you know, I think uh, sometimes we, we expect too much from vaccines. Um, and in this case, we know that the vaccines do prevent some disease, but they're not as good at preventing disease as they are at preventing serious disease. So preventing hospitalization and preventing death. And um, from my point of view, that's certainly what, uh, what we're trying to do here. Uh, in the coal fields, uh, uh, wait, I just, sorry, I lost my train of thought there. Uh, on on uh, a little bit of the same question, if I already had COVID, do I still need a booster? And when am I eligible to get that booster? Yes, you do st absolutely still need a booster, even if you have had COVID before. And it goes back to what Nayeli was just saying. It decreases the severity. If you were going to get it again, it will decrease the severity. And you need to keep your immune system prepared and will, um, ready to fight COVID. It also has to do with the families, you know, where we serve, the population we serve, we have large families living in small situations, small settings, small apartments. We need to make sure that we're protecting those around us. We're all going to work again. We're getting out and we all want to take these masks off. The mask mandate has been dropped. And if we keep getting these boosters, we can keep the masks off. But without the boosters, we're going to end up back in masks. We're not going to be able to have the kids in schools take off masks if we don't keep getting boosted and keep these numbers where they have been and keep increasing them. Thanks. Absolutely. Uh, Dr. Conaway, can you give us a little more uh, information about what's the difference between natural immunity and vaccine-related immunity? Well, this question has been studied a lot because it's been a question that's been raised by the public. The one, well, why, if I go ahead and get COVID, and, and you'd be shocked that people actually had COVID parties. I mean, as, as hard as that is to believe, um, that uh, people believe that natural immunity will, is better than anything that could be provided by a vaccine. Um, what these people forget is that COVID itself uh, it causes, um, certainly you have a disease that can, might take your life, uh, land you in the hospital, you might spread it to someone in your family who is vulnerable, a grandparent or someone else who's undergoing treatments, um, a work, a co-worker. Uh, and so uh, getting COVID itself is problematic on a number of, of levels. And when you look at uh, these um, sort of a time study, look at people that had COVID and watch when they get their second, when they might get COVID again, 
um, and you look at their levels of immunity, if you will, that that immunity from natural COVID uh, wanes. And that these same people, if they are vaccinated, um, will see their level of protection rise. Um, and so for people who get vaccinated, they get the benefit of a high degree of protection against COVID, high degree of protection against death and hospitalization without ever having COVID in the first place, which is, I think is a, is a great thing. We know that just like natural immunity, that there is, there is waning immunity, even from vaccination, which is why we uh, have a booster. I myself have now had my second booster dose. As soon as it was uh, approved for use, and, and, and I know people are going to find this hard to believe, I'm over 50. Uh, I went in and got my, my vaccination uh, this past Saturday, uh, you know, and uh, I'm, I'm very happy to have done that. I know that my level of protection has been boosted because I've done that, and that will allow me to, to get you know, to get closer to normal uh, to get, and, and, and to be able to participate in things without the fear of first infecting myself or infecting somebody else. We all have a responsibility to each other in this society. That's, that's really what a society is part of the, uh, the, the deal we make to be in a society is that you have to look out for one another. One way to do that uh, during a pandemic is to get vaccinated. Absolutely. Thank you. So well said. Uh, Naomi, do these boosters help against the variants? Absolutely. They, um, we know that you know these boosters are um, evolving, right? Uh, their their protection as well as the variants. So we just want to make sure that we get boosted, and um, you know, if possible, continue to use the mitigation strategies of masking up. Uh, when you're out in um, you know, areas where there's, it's overcrowded or indoor spaces. So between the boosters and the mitigation strategies to washing hands and staying away from large crowds, I think that you know, it, it's the best formula to stay protected. Excellent. And we certainly are starting to see lots of uh, variants come, kind of come and go. Um, we've been through the Delta variant. Now we've been through the first Omicron variant and we're into the the variant of the variant. Um, and and uh, it's not surprising that the vaccines may not work quite as well against the variants of the variants, but we do know that the booster on top of that primary series or on top of natural infection really does protect you well against uh, hospitalization and against, uh, and against death. So- and, and, and I would just add ahead. that that the studies, uh, and they are, you know, are evolving and ongoing, uh, looking at this question of the effectiveness of the vaccine against uh, Omicron and now Omicron's cousin, the stealth Omicron BA2, whatever you want to call it. It's uh, something that we want to avoid. But the preliminary studies are showing that, that this new variant, which is now dominant across the country, is not able to escape uh, the protection of the vaccine. I think that's very important for people to understand. The vaccines that are available today, that are approved in this country, will work against this new stealth Omicron. So get, if you haven't been vaccinated yet, go ahead and get vaccinated. If you haven't been boosted yet, go ahead and you're eligible, go ahead and get uh, boosted as well. Absolutely, thank you. Um, on another uh, note, uh, Dr. Conaway, um, are you still finding are you still finding hesitancy in your community about the booster or the vaccination? And, and how are you dress, addressing this? Do you, is there, are there certain populations that are still more uh, resistant or more hesitant to get the vaccine? Well, well, for, well, let me just start out by saying, you know, in Burlington County, um, we're lucky that we're among the highest vaccinated populations in the state. We're right at the top of the list. 91% of, of our residents have been uh, vaccinated with a primary series. About 60% of uh, our folks have been boosted, um, in part because we've kept at it and we, and we have been uh, trying to be, uh, have a forward lean uh, with the help of our partners at the state, the federal government, and locally our, our partners at the, our hospital partners, such as virtual health, to get information out there about the vaccines and how effective it is. We have conducted focus groups to try to get an understanding of, of, of why people are hesitant. A lot of it has to do with this, with the concern about the speedy um, development of the vaccine and perhaps that steps were skipped uh, uh, with respect to this vaccine. 
And, and, and so, you know, we lean forward as we must uh, with understanding of, of the fact that people have concerns and, and try to educate them about uh, what the true risks are, you know, understanding how difficult it is for people to appreciate it. But, you know, we have to try. Our job is to, is to encourage people uh, to uh, participate in their health care, um, to think about social responsibility as well, to think about things that might be missed if you, uh, in your life, if, you, um, if you're unlucky enough to, be, uh, to succumb or have you know, very serious uh, trouble related to this vaccine. And uh, there was a study out here today that, that suggests that um, some months after you recover from having COVID, you, know, you are at higher risk of developing uh, blood clots in your legs and in your lungs. I mean, this, this is why these, uh, this idea that you should sort of gain natural immunity and that it's not such a terrible thing if you actually get COVID. You know, these, um, you know, the studies are showing, again, they're early and there's a lot more study that's gonna be done from here and for decades, looking at the impact of this virus. Um, but so far the news isn't particularly good. I don't want COVID. I don't believe I've had it, pretty sure I haven't. Uh, and if the next time they tell me to go get a, a vaccine or get boosted, I'm going to be uh, first in line uh, to receive it. Absolutely. You know, we all have, uh, lots of people have this idea, oh, it's natural, it's organic, it's great. But I think those of us who live through Sandy right here in New Jersey know that Mother Nature is not always so benign, not always so great. So if we have something that we can prevent things like those dis natural disasters, boy, we ought to go ahead and use it and, uh, and, and protect ourselves as well as we can. Uh, Nicole, when someone comes in and to get the booster, if they ask you, how do I know which booster to get, what are you telling them? So our providers will have a conversation with them. Um, most of our population does come in knowing what they want. Uh, we make sure at all our vaccine sites, we have every vaccine available. And a lot of people do stick with what they originally got, but there are some people that want to switch. So our providers will have the conversation with them, talk about which will be the best protection for them. Um, majority of our patients now, um, a lot of people stuck with Moderna and now for their um, latest booster, for their second booster, are looking to switch to Pfizer. But again, we're very open to listening to people and letting them ask questions because um, otherwise we're gonna scare them away by telling them specifically, you have to get this one, you have to do that one. And we can weigh the pros and cons. We can tell them what the pros and cons are. You know, there are some side effects that people hear of in the news and they, that gets in their head. So we can also, you know, go after that misinformation tell them what the actual rates of these side effects are. Um, one of our big things now that we're also talking to people about, young people <laughs> that um, kind of say, oh, it's just a cold, I get it, you know, and I move on, is we're seeing a lot more long COVID. We're seeing the diagnosis of long COVID and the long-term effects, and nobody knows who's going to get that. It doesn't matter your age or who you are. So that is one of our big things that we're now educating on. And it could be anything from the blood clots to lung problems to heart problems. So we really wanna make sure people understand that. And when they're coming in and saying how hesitant they are on the vaccine, telling them what to research on their own also. You know, if you're reading this online, make sure you also look up long COVID and what could happen after you get better or start to feel better from your initial cold-like symptoms. I think that's a great point. And we know that if you don't get COVID, you can't get long COVID. So yes, the vaccine does prevent long COVID. And you know, it's just as you said, it's all ages. You can get it even if you had very mild or even asymptomatic, even if you had no symptoms at all, a month later, you can have these symptoms of long COVID, which include everything like aches and pains, wherever you can name them, joints, bones, head, um, belly aches, uh, diarrhea, mood changes, sleep problems. Brain and one of the most concerning for young children is this brain fog mm -hmm. so that you, your memory is not as good as it was. You read a paragraph and you don't know really what it means. Um, some children have even lost the ability to do math. So preventing long COVID is a goal in, in and of itself. Uh, Dr. Conway, go ahead. No, I, I, I agree with you. Absolutely. I, I think people are taking 
there are many people who take this virus uh, lightly. They think it's, uh, as you say, it's, it's just a cold. And, and I tell you, uh, that is, that is um, I'll be frank, but it's sort of dangerous thinking. And, uh, you know, you might be, be, you might not be the lucky one who, who manages to, you know, to get it and, and have, uh, you know, a, a few of, of any uh, long-term effects, but, you know, not everybody's so lucky. And uh, again, I, I think that uh, the goal should be uh, for everyone not to get COVID in the first place. Absolutely. Uh, Nelly, how do I know if I'm eligible for a booster? Sure, absolutely. Dr. Fisher, you mentioned from the beginning what the new uh, tracking system is. Uh, we are walking around with infographics kind of showing, um, you know, what, what the scenario is depending on your pathway or the vaccine that you want to opt for. Um, additionally, I do want to mention that there are programs uh, specifically related to workers, uh, you know, time off, um, or earned sick leave uh, for individuals who need to take time off, right? Uh, and that's for anyone in New Jersey, uh, including seasonal migrant workers. So for my communities who may be concerned that they're gonna lose their job, um, this, uh, this particular act does protect you against that. Uh, if you are getting tested for COVID, if you're gonna get vaccinated for COVID, or if you're uh, also recovering from COVID. Excellent points. And, and I think um, people are concerned, will I miss a day of work? And for some people, that's a huge deal. So trying to figure out how to do that and how to time your vaccine um, are really um, important things. Now, one of the other things that we've uh, heard, not only from COVID vaccine, but from other vaccines is, do vaccines affect fertility? So Dr. Conaway, is there any evidence that, this, that these COVID-19 uh, vaccines affect either male or female fertility? And is uh, there, there really there, research on it? Uh, there, there, there's no evidence uh, that uh, there's any effect on, on uh, fertility. Uh, these vaccines boost your immune, immune system. It really doesn't implicate uh, any of your uh, reproductive cells, that is either your eggs or your sperm. It, um, it, it boosts your immune, immune system by providing a piece of the viral protein against which your body will uh, uh, bring forward an immune response. It, it doesn't integrate itself into your cells. It doesn't um, affect uh, negatively or positively your ovaries or your testes or the, or the productive capacity uh, of those organs. So. Um, there's just no evidence uh, of that. It's unfortunate that that's out there, but again, you know, people will say anything and, and the, the, the job, the task is, and we've got to educate our kids about this as well as adults is, is to look at things with enough skepticism uh, and to ask those who know, health professionals, uh, scientists, uh, there's plenty of good data out there too. Go to trusted sources, go to your health professionals, go to your health department, go to the CDC. Um, and, uh, and you'll find the right answers and, and make the right decisions about your health. I think it's important to remember that the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecologists, as well as the, um, the group on, uh, on uh, fertility and, and, um, and uh, in vitro <laughs> fertilization, mm -hmm. all of those groups have actually said, everyone should get this vaccine. You should get it if you're thinking about getting pregnant, you should get it if you are pregnant. You should get it if you're breastfeeding. You should get the vaccine because there is no effect on fertility. I, I kind of like to say, well, if anything, it actually enhances your fertility because it keeps you from being sick. So <laughs> if anything, it's going to help you. It's certainly, there's no evidence and no biologic reason to think that it would actually affect uh, fertility. And you're right about that. Remember the pregnancy is common and it is as it is, it is a, a higher risk state for women. Um, it is, it is, you know, pregnancy, uh, well, usually everything goes well. It, it does present women with uh, a higher risk of uh, succumbing to illness. And uh, if you can prevent illness, um, you lessen the risk that is, that is there and real uh, of pregnancy. And so that, that's why these major uh, groups, the, the, the research, the scientists have said, uh, that uh, just as you said, if you're thinking about pregnant, getting pregnant, if you're if you are pregnant, you should get vaccinated. Again, not only against COVID, but other things that can harm you and your baby as well. By the way, yeah. 
It's a good point. And, mm -hmm. and it is uh, something we have to remember during this pandemic, a lot of people have not gotten all those regular things, all the screening tests and all their regular care. So it's, uh, it's time to go back and, uh, you know, spring into action, get it, get taken care of, uh, but also, you know, go back and get the, the things that you may have skipped. Um, Nicole, there, there's um, some concern out there. We know that the, the federal uh, government, the, the COVID funding is beginning to run out. And we know that as of Monday, um, the payment for um, administering the vaccine, um, those funds have run out. Has that um, had any effect in, in your particular area? And are you seeing the effect anywhere else in, in Newark? So it hasn't specifically um, affected us. St. James is federally qualified. We are used to taking care of our patients on a shoestring budget. We always have and we always will. And we'll make sure that the patients get taken care of no matter what the funding plan looks like. At this point, everything remains the same. We're still doing all our pop-up vaccine sites that we've been doing in the community since the beginning. Uh, we go all over the community to vaccinate uh, smaller sites in neighborhoods, churches, schools, et cetera. And we plan on continuing to do that. And in our health center, as always, we've always had a sliding fee scale for any of our services. And this is just another service to us. So at this point, no, it really has not affected it. And every town, every city has its health department who, again, also will be providing the vaccines to everybody. So we, at this point, are still operating the same as we were a few months ago, and vaccines and testing are still available to everybody at St. James facilities and pop-up events. Excellent. Thank you. And it's it's uh, good to hear, and we're hoping that uh, it continues actually everywhere, and the Department of Health, of course, is still uh, providing those vaccines uh, free of charge for everyone. Um, Dr. Conaway, what exactly is in the COVID vaccine? Well, it is, it is a, a piece of, um, of uh, DNA um, that uh, codes for a, a part of the uh, COVID uh, viron. So when we are impacted by anything in the environment, uh, there's, um, there's often involves a protein or some element against which uh, we mount an immune response. And this can be to, unfortunately, to peanuts, it can be to pollen, it can be to uh, a cold virus that you get or any, anything that, that can impact your body, often through your mouth, often through your nose, um, through your eyes, against which an immune response will be um, um, uh, mounted. The important thing for people to understand is that there's no live virus in the vaccine, it, you're not getting anything that's that can actually cause um, COVID, which I think is one of the things that, that's out there. The vaccines will give you COVID. That's that's not the case. You might have a sore arm, as I had after, on Saturday and Sunday after I got my shot. You might feel a, a little a feverish for a day or two. Um, uh, now with the booster, I think I had uh, the, for my first booster. I had you know, 24 hours of a low grade temperature and, and a little bit of nausea, which I ate through. Um, but uh, with the second booster, I had maybe a 12 hours of a little lightheadedness, a little arm, uh, shoulder pain, but that's, those are our expected responses uh, to uh, the COVID vaccination. And by the way, to many vaccinations that people get, people often will feel a little flu like if they get their flu shot. By the way, we're in a, we're in a period of high flu activity now. So I, I hope that people well, recognize that. I don't, I'm not sure you can still get the flu vaccine at this time, sort of late, um, whether they've extended the time or not, have they? I might have to check on that one. But, but your point about people not getting their flu vaccination is an important one. That's one of the reasons I think we're seeing high the flu activity. But, but, but back to the point, no one is giving, injecting a live COVID virus into anybody uh, in order to provide immunity against COVID. You are um, being given um, this RNA uh, that can go in and create a protein that's, that matches the protein on the virus and the body amounts a, a, an immune response to that foreign protein. And, and that's what you want. <laughs> that was what provides immunity. And if you're uncomfortable for a day or 24 hours or even two days, uh, that's well worth it to give you months and months 
uh, of protection. And um, uh, so uh, that's that's my answer. I hope it's a good one. Yeah. I think it's a great one, mm -hmm. and I think uh, it's absolutely true. Now, one of the we actually did get a, a question from one of our viewers here. Mm -hmm. um, they're not really viewing, but they're mm -hmm. waiting patiently to see the the recording. Mm -hmm. And um, they're they're asking why we're using the boosters from the original vaccine when we now have variants, and we know that the um, original vaccine is not quite as protective against, um, against the Omicron variant as it was against Delta and Alpha and, the, and of course, the, the original um, SARS-CoV-2. So um, can you just, just give us a little, a little of your thoughts about um, using, using the booster, which we actually now know does work, versus coming up with a brand new vaccine. What, what's, uh, what's the give and take there? Well, first, I mean, you're absolutely right that, that the boosters uh, work and they raise your level of immunity, they raise your level of protection and they remain highly effective in preventing death and hospitalization from all of the various variants that have been dominant here in our country from Alpha to Delta to, uh, to Omicron and now Omicron's cousin to Stealth Omicron, uh, very highly effective. Now, uh, research uh, is ongoing in this area because there is obviously a recognition with the four variants we're not, we've been dealt with in this country and many others, by the way, um, uh, that we need perhaps to come up with a, with a vaccine that will provide longer protection uh, because um, there is a concern that there might be booster fatigue out there. And here the uh, authorities are saying, uh, we want you to get a booster uh, yet again. Now I'll take the booster shot because I don't want to get put on Omicron. But uh, you know, we, we, the science is advancing. Moderna uh, has come out with a study to, to attack um, uh, some different proteins uh, on uh, the viruses that, that um, are under study. Uh, they're, I think they're recruiting um, people into that study now and and you know we'll have to wait and see for the results but the the search for a better vaccine that um that will present uh, a number of proteins uh again not the virus but a number of proteins on the viruses that circulate so that immune response can be mounted against that uh, them um is underway and so but uh just like this current set of vaccines uh we want all the studies to be done thoroughly, just like the current set of vaccines. We want uh, all races, uh, races involved in this study. More racial minorities were involved in the study of the current vaccines than just about any other medicine people currently take. I think that's important for people to recognize, particularly people of color who, who uh, need to get this vaccine. Uh, and so we have to take the appropriate amount of time. The, okay, let's get a, a large cohort of people who are studied make sure that cohort matches the population who needs to receive the vaccine, that we look at any gender issues, uh, any age issues that might be involved, and make sure we once again deliver a highly effective, highly safe vaccine uh, that hopefully will, will provide protection for the longest possible time in the future. The hope is that you can get your flu shot and your COVID vaccine, the vaccine in the fall, and you're protected for a year, and you'll be good to go. But we're not there yet. Uh, but the the studies and the research to provide that um, that um, uh, that to the world is underway. Absolutely, and I I think that uh, you know for the near future, the boosters are what we have, and and we're studying them to make sure that they work. At some point, we may need a different vaccine. I think that there's been changing information throughout this pandemic and that makes people uncomfortable, but I think people should understand that the information is changing. We're learning more. We're figuring out how we can do our best job at protecting people. And sometimes that means we change the messages over time. It's part of so the scientific wanna, process as, of discovery. I mean, that's what we're doing. <laughs> Let the yeah. science lead. Let's discover what we need to discover. And, and let's uh, do what we need to to respond to the challenges that are before us. We do this all the time. This is part of the human. This is this is this is the process of being a, a human, <laughs> a sentient in this world, and and taking up arms against the things that trouble us. That's what that's what we do. Right? Absolutely, beautifully said. I want to, as we come draw to an end here, 
I want to give you uh, each a chance to to uh, just let us know if there's um, something else or something that else that you wanted to say, or just leave us with a few thoughts. Uh, so, Nally, let's start with you. Sure, absolutely. So here at the CCC, we're uh, launching our Spring Into Action campaign. It's a call to action for all our, um, individuals who want to come out and volunteer with us this spring. We hope that you're uh, available to come out with us on the weekends and help support vaccine sites and answer questions uh, in the community that um, you know uh, needs that information. So we hope to see you on the field. Thank you. And that CCC is the uh, COVID Community Core. And I just have to say that Nayeli had it going here in New Jersey before the president announced that there was going to be COVID Community Cores elsewhere. So we actually beat them to that. They stole that from us. Well done. Uh, Nicole Fields. So St. James Health will be continuing all their vaccine pop-up events around the city of Newark over the next few weeks and months. We also have our testing available at all of our health center locations, but we're also really focusing on getting our patients back in for their primary care visits. Um, as we get vaccinated, as we get back to a new normal, we need to make sure we are coming in for our annual physicals, our pap smears, and that our children are up to date on their other vaccines as well, not just their COVID vaccines. Outstanding. And Assemblyman Conaway. Well, I encourage you to get boosted and here in Burlington County, our mega site is still open. Uh, we have hours on Tuesdays from uh, nine to two uh, and on Fridays from 11 to six and on Saturdays from nine to two. You can access an appointment by going to www.virtua.org forward slash vaccine. Uh, www.virtua.org forward slash vaccine. If I said it fast, it would have been fine. Um, but uh, you can get an appointment uh, through that link and uh, you can also walk in. So whether you've been vaccinated or not, come get vaccinated, get, get started on the road to better health and, and, and more uh, protected health. And if you need a booster, well, it's there for you as well. We continue to offer testing here in our county uh, at the uh, Willenboro Town Center. And by the way, the mega site is at the East Gate um, shopping center uh, next to the Morristown Mall between the uh, Home Depot and Party City there. So it's easy to get to three major, four major highways. Uh, so please come and get yourself boosted and vaccinated and tell your friends. Thank you so much. And, and Burlington is absolutely the highest uh, booster rate in the, uh, in, the, in the state. So it's all because of uh, all of your hard work. So I wanna again, thank all of you uh, from the panel uh, thanks to our listeners. We're sorry that we really couldn't live stream and, and get more of your live questions, but we hope that we've answered uh, lots of questions for you. So take care and good night. Well done, everybody.